It's 2311 going to appeal the fine to Bubba? And what did you think of NASCAR's decision to fine him in light of what he did and maybe what, you know, not finding what Chase Elliott did? Yeah, I mean, I think you can look at him similarly if you want to. You can look at him definitely differently if you want to. Um, in all in all, it's a judgment call. And I think that's the kind of explanation uh, that they gave the team was that, you know, it's it's a judgment call. And, and more than likely, we've, we've seen these things happen. In other sports where, you know, when the camera's on you live, right, it's not something they got cut away to and said, oh, yeah, by the way, this happened after the checkered. I think it's just being live right there and, and everyone seeing it uh, probably caused a little bit more of a social media uproar, which then they responded to that. So I think um, from the team standpoint, um, I, I don't believe there'll be any uh, appeals or anything like that. Um, I think you just, it's a learning moment that you, uh, try not to repeat. Now, I didn't, I didn't weigh in on it with him, uh, because, I mean, I think that those things happen on a regular basis each and every week. Uh, it's just, again, the circumstances of it being live on TV there was a little different. Results lately haven't been rep uh, representative of the speed that you guys have had. Do you feel like this is a weekend where you guys can turn, turn that around? And what, why do you feel like the results haven't been there? It's been some wonky races. I mean, it's just been a race. You know, there's been rain that really changed New Hampshire, you know, quite a bit from going to you know, what we think is a race winning car and, and leading and looking and feeling like we're going to win to not. And then uh, obviously Chicago just turned out the way it did. We were really good in the, in the drive pace. I felt very good with where I was at there. It went to rain and then New Hampshire, or, uh, Nashville, we all saw what happened there at the end. So just, yeah, the, some different finishes for sure, where this racetrack usually plays out in a more predictable manner than what other those others have. Um, surely weather can be a factor and things like that, but uh, you, you just feel like this track, you typically get an idea of, you know, the best car usually wins here more often in a higher percentage than it does uh, at those others. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Denny, have you seen the big um, banner exiting the garage, the, the Mavis? I've seen it on social, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> where I was going with that was given everything that happened last year, do you, I mean, do you get a chuckle out of that, that the fans now have to, it's <laughs> you and your car up there welcoming them back? Yeah, I, I love Mavis for it, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, certainly, uh, you know, playing to the market uh, is very, very good, and especially at a racetrack that they know I've got a really good track record at, so... I'm glad them and the track were able to work something out there to, to make it all to, you know, poke the fans a little bit. Uh, the second thing I wanted to ask is going back to the Oval in Indianapolis last week, I believe you've been one of the ones outspoken over the years about um, we should be on the Oval there. So now that it's happening next week, just your, your expectations for that race, I think there's some concern about what the racing will look yeah. like, but the excitement and just the atmosphere of being back on the Oval. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're, you know, crazy about side-by-side -side racing it's probably not going to be too exciting for you but it's still just a big event and you know it's still over time has been you know some of the cars with the best engines best aerodynamics the best execution on pit road all those things is what equals a winner at that track uh, there's many different ways you can win in nascar right it doesn't always have to be through you know this the normal competition that always happens we've seen it you know fuel mileage be a part of the last few winners and things like that. So Indy will be no different. It will be an execution type race. Um, you're going to need to qualify well, uh, but you just never know what can happen. Strategy is a big deal there. I do hope that these cars um, have enough drag down the straightaway to create slingshot type passes like we have, like we see on the Indy cars at that track. The only thing that will limit that is that I think our corner speeds are maybe just a hair too fast for, for the second place guy to stay close enough to make that work. So it'll be tough, but I think on new tires, you got a shot to see something pretty great. Um, other than that, I think you, you know, the, the purist needs to be looking at the strategy part of it. Jim Hunter, Motorsport.com. Sort of related to Kelly's question, um, before uh, the next gen car and before the Indy road course, there used to be a lot of talk that people who did well at Pocono also did well at Indy or vice versa. I wondered if you felt that was ever true for yourself. And is it too early to tell whether that might still hold true with the next gen car? I think there will be similarities for sure. Um, a lot of it is just because of the, the long straightaways, the corners, um, the angle of the corners are not 
all that different. Uh, when you look at turn two here at Pocono, um, the way you approach it would be very similar to what you approach turn two at Indy. So I just think for many, many years, it's the cars that have that good mix of uh, horsepower, drag, and downforce ratio. You take it to this next week at, at Indy, what you took here at Pocono, and you're going to see a lot of similarities. So I do think that um, you, you can draw some of those conclusions. You have 54 Cup Series wins, one more, and you would tie the NASCAR Hall of Fame record of Rusty Wallace for 11th on the all-time wins list with 55 a lot of wins. Do things like that matter to you? Is that a big deal? Yeah, I mean, it certainly is. It's it's the where I've shifted my goals in this, um, in the, the final years of my career is is to try to get to a big win number, get inside the top 10 of all-time uh, winners. And so that's the goal that I can achieve week in, week out, right? I mean, certainly you always have goals of trying to win a championship, and that goes over a long period of time. But week to week, right, it, it, that's what fuels me to continue to go to the racetrack and do this grind every week is to try to keep nailing down victories. Um, so, yeah, to me, I think that when this is all said and done, all these different formats have changed, cars have changed over time, but the wins still stand as, as equal. So um, I think that those are why I, I value them so much. And a quick follow-up, 54 wins and wanting to get 55 what does that number mean to you? What did you think you would get by this time? Like, that's a large number of wins. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly four to five years ago, my number would have been 50, somewhere in that range. Um, but, you know, as, as times change and you, you know, start to pick up your performance, you, you change your goals. And so that certainly has changed. Um, you know, again, I, I just feel so much more agitated by the ones that, like, we, we had one. <laughs> you know, there was three this year leading inside five to go. And a late race caution just changed everything. So I think that, um, you know, if you want to get to those goals that you want to win, you really got to capitalize on all the moments because you just never know whether our performance will continue to stay at this rate uh, for the years to come. But you do know that you've got it now, so you try to capitalize. Andrew Stoddard, BrushStrokes.com. Over here, Denny. Uh, so talking about speaking of current wins, seven wins here at Pocono, more than any other driver, and you've done it in a variety of Cup Series car iterations, the Gen 4, the car tomorrow, the Gen 6, and the next gen. And yet, regardless of the car, you just keep winning. So what is it about Pocono? What is it about this racetrack that suits your as a, suits your driver and your driving style where you just keep winning regardless of what kind of what NASCAR throws at you? Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm a part of it for sure. I mean, you can't not draw that conclusion, but I just think this is, this track in Indy, for whatever reason, has just always been the telltale of where does your team really stand? Um, you know, because you have to have such good execution on pit road, your strategy has to be good, and you have to have a, those three things, low drag, high downforce, high horsepower, like, those are the things you have to have to, to be fast in the Cup Series week in, week out. And this track in particular just really magnifies it. And so I think that I've just been blessed with being with a really, really good team that figures this out. And certainly over time, I've given them the information they that they needed to build me fast cars. So I think it's just my driving style of being typically easy into the corner, hard off the corner. Works when you got these on straightaways. Thank you. Good. All right, Danny, I, I know this is a track you've done very well at. Uh, I know the focus remains here on Pocono, but looking a few weeks down the line, Richmond is coming up again. You won there earlier this year. How do you sort of repeat that similar success at a track you've already won at, especially you'll have a couple weeks off due to the Olympics. So to get back on track there, head to Richmond, you know, win there for a second time. How, how does that approach sort of uh, yeah, I mean, we're, I'm always trying to get better. It doesn't matter what the result was. I mean, if I think back to Richmond, we won, but we weren't leading. We weren't going to win unless a late race caution came out. So I think that um, there's some improvement to be made there, and we've already kind of gone over what we need to do to be better there. And then w once we start preparing here in a few weeks after the break, uh, we'll, we'll treat it just like a track we've never won at. And that's, you know, focusing our full effort on bringing the best car we can and me making sure that I do what I need to do in the car to keep winning at that track. So I think that, um, you know, this is a never ending cycle. And as much as the cars look the same, we've been here now three times with this car. 
every time setups have been different. You know, things have always changed. If, you know, if you change the, the weather 10 degrees at this racetrack, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and come up with something new. So we're never just kind of resting on our laurels and saying, you know, well, we won there last time. We'll be good. We still have to put in the same amount of preparation week in, week out to be good. Thanks for on NASCAR.com. Denny, 42 points out uh, from the regular season uh, championship lead right now. Is uh, is there enough time um, with the amount of races left for you to catch the to catch Larson at this point um, or any of the other top three and give yourself a shot at this regular season championship? You know, I think that in, unless they have problems, it'll be tough. But, I mean, everyone is struggling to find consistency, right? Uh, we were as consistent as anyone for five weeks, and then now I've had five weeks the exact opposite. So I just think that, uh, you know, we would need help for sure, uh, and we would need to be as good as we were two months ago. All right, Jenny, thanks so much for coming in. Good luck this Thank weekend. you.